In the last patch, SBI changed the way that Reflect works so that its damage is no longer based on damage modifiers. Basically, this means that if you're in plate armor or if you're in cloth armor, no matter which, you'll be doing the same damage to your enemy if you reflect one of their attacks. To compensate for this, some of the deflect numbers were increased to give it more damage. And that's essentially what this build is built around. You have a really tanky build with a bunch of reflects that gives you really efficient damage trades versus the enemy. Let's take a look at the build. So after testing it out for a while, I've separated it into two builds. The main build and then a budget build which you can run very cheaply. So for the main build, you're gonna use a Cultist Cowl, Armor of Valor, Scholar Shoes, Fetford Cape, Taproot, and either a Heron Spear or the Avalonian Spear. For abilities on both the spears, you're gonna run usually the first Q, deflecting spin on the W, and then either the lifesteal or attack speed passive depending on the matchup, although the passive doesn't really matter too much as it's not used too often with this build. For the budget version, you have a lot more options. Hood is going to be your hunter hood. Your chest piece is either going to be some plate armor, usually either knight armor, guardian armor, or soldier armor. Boots, again, you can use scholar sandals. Offhand can be torch or mist collar, or even a sarcophagus can work well as well. For cape, since it's budget, just use a normal cape, otherwise you can use a theft for cape, and for the weapons are the same, although Heron Spear is the cheaper option. For food and potions, potions are almost always going to be healing potions. Food, you can either run sandwiches, omelets, or Avalonian omelets. I would suggest sandwiches for most of the time, as they just make the damage trades even more efficient for you. So let's talk about the playstyle a little bit. So essentially, playing this build, you don't really want to worry about killing your opponent as much as you want to be worried about countering what they do. So pretty much any time the enemy is trying to attack you, pop one of your sort of deflecting items. Anytime they're lining up a Q or a W, just pop deflecting spin. If they're doing something like a firewall, you can use your armor of valor. While you're deflecting spin on cooldown, you can put a cultist cowl on them so they take damage if they do damage to you, or pop your hunter hood for the same effect. Really, you're just trying to make it so that they can never do damage to you for free. They're always going to be taking damage back when they try to damage you, and because you're in the super tanky build, they'll be taking more effective damage than you will. Their percent health will be falling much faster than yours if you're effectively deflecting all of their attacks. Other than that, you just really poke them with Qs, you can space melees a little bit if you want, and then use your E when you either need to buy some time or they have an important thing to purge if you're using the Avalonian Spear, such as maybe Cleric Robe or Mercenary Jacket. So let's look at some pros and cons of this build. Starting with pros, it wins versus one-shot combos or other burst combos. You're super tanky, and so none of these one-shot combos can even get close to killing you. Uh, for example, like the Black Hands combos, two combos will not kill you. The Pike one-shots will not one-shot you. All of these things that rely on killing you really quickly are just not going to work versus this build, and you'll just be able to tank through their combo and then kill them. It's also very versatile, it's very good against melees and ranged. Both sorts of matchups are completely fine for this build. It doesn't do much better against one than the other one. Another pro is that it's actually more fun to play than a lot of the other like strong builds. For example, the Black Hands meta that's been here forever and a lot of the crossbow meta is pretty much you just press your buttons and hope that you kill them. With this, there's a lot more depth, it's a lot slower and you get to sort of like play around your opponent rather than just rolling your face on the keyboard and hoping that it works. Another advantage of this build is that for plate armor, it actually clears very fast. It has a pretty efficient clear just because you're using spears. You have forced to spears, which is incredibly good. And both the E's for Heron Spear and Daybreaker are quite good at clearing as well. Lastly, since you're on spear, you have a lot of versatility in how you decide to play the matchup. If you start with a reflect method and deflecting spin on your W and it's just not working, you can change your Q to the other Q and it's completely fine. You can change to any of the other W's and it's also good. So you have tons of versatility. You can play around with different methods and you know in some matchups go with a different plan than the pure deflect one. Moving on to cons, the weaknesses of this build, one is that it loses versus healers. Sustained builds like double mercenary jacket aren't as bad because you can deflect a lot of the damage that they need to do while they're healing, but pure healers like Howl of Falls and Divine Staffs, things like that, you will always lose too just because you don't have enough damage to kill them. You're in plate armor, you rely on reflecting their damage, they don't do a lot of damage, you don't do a lot of damage, so you're really just not going to be able to kill them. 
Another downside is that it's a little bit lower mobility than some of the other meta builds. You can have difficulty chasing things like bows and bear paws and quarter staffs. You just have a little bit less mobility than them, especially if you don't switch to something like cripple or the hook on your W. Another con is that it doesn't have the lowest skill floor. So I was talking about how it's more interesting because it's a little bit more reflexive than the sort of black hands and crossbow builds, but this also means that it requires a little bit more game knowledge to pull off effectively. Essentially, you need to know what spells they have so you can look for how to deflect them. Lastly, as this is a pure deflect build, damage that is unreflectable will always be your bane. You cannot use your, you know, reflecting spin into this. If you're using Hunter, you can't use that into it. If it's a big burst, your armor of valor won't get a lot of value from deflecting it. So really, any build that has a lot of unreflectable damage, you're just not going to do very well against. Okay, that's it for this video, everyone. I hope this build is as successful for you as it has been for me. As always, if you like the video and want to see more, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel.